This episode of Two Beers Till Takeoff is sponsored by No Days Wasted, a leader in the hangover supplement industry. Listeners can now get 15% off their next purchase by using promo code Two Beers. That's Two Beers, Beers in Capital at checkout. Live life or your next trip to the maximum with No Days Wasted. Hello and welcome to Two Beers Till Takeoff, the podcast inspired by conversations overheard at the airport bar. Join Phil as he grabs a couple of beers and chats with interesting people from around the world, sharing expert knowledge and hilarious stories that you won't find in your guidebook. So pull up a stool and get ready for an adventure as we explore worlds of travel and beyond with Two Beers Till Takeoff. Four hours in a Taliban headquarters. I had dog meat in Laos. Was it a golden retriever? Smack a dirty old smooch <laughs> on our beautiful place right here. We didn't die, but we fell down the side of the mountain. Hello and welcome to Two Beers Still Take Off. My name is Phil and say hello to season three, baby. I am so happy to be back. I feel like a brand new man and I'm ready to get going. An, up to, an update though, before we start, you can now expect two episodes per month instead of four, but they'll still have the same high quality guests and interviews as you always have loved. So nothing on that end is changing. Now, let's introduce our guest, here to update us on his travels and leave us with a hilarious story. This man has gotten his nickname from the movie Ice Age, Dog. Finished sixth in the 2020 Beer World Cup. Dog. Some would call this man the Lance Armstrong of people with two testicles. Dog. <laughs> Welcome to the show. Sid. Oh, fuck. How long have you been working on that for? Six months. Yeah. Uh, since my last episode, I've, I've had that one penciled in. Yeah, it's nice. It's nice to be back, though. It's, it's, it's been a while, right? Cheers, buddy. Yeah, cheers. Where you at now? Let's maybe give uh, the people an update of, because <laughs> you you've been doing a lot. You you bought a bucket hat. <laughs> yeah, he's just trying to get teased by goths. No luck so far, <laughs> but you can keep trying, can't you? Um, yeah, it's been uh, it's been wild since we last spoke. You know, I think uh, just to do a quick a quick whip round, I suppose I've been to Saudi Arabia, Bahrain the UAE, Hungary, Portugal, well, back to Portugal, and then back Mexico, Belize, and now Brazil, back home, well, the motherland. And so so I just want to call back to the uh, intro. There was a Lance Armstrong reference that probably nobody understood but us, but do you want to maybe uh, explain why I made that reference? Yeah, so I'm in a town called Boa Vista, which is in the north of Brazil, right? And there's a reason that nobody's heard of that who's listening even if you're brazilian you probably haven't heard of it no it's a state capital but it's probably the least significant state capital like if there weren't diamonds in the state i think they would have just given this place to venezuela there is nothing here and i like geographically i think i'm closer to new york than i am to rio wow in brazil yeah i mean i'm in the north i'm in the northern hemisphere but still in brazil yeah because we were we we're trying to find, figure out like well, we were talking about daylight savings time and I was like, oh, like, does that affect you or whatever? It's more light out. And then you're like, no, no, it's, it's the same as you, dude. We're in the same atmosphere, idiot. Yeah. Well, yeah, we don't, we don't have daylight saving time anymore, but like we're talking about the seasons, you know, this is technically now winter. I think it was 37 degrees today. Poor guy. Yeah, the closer you get to the equator, the less relevant all this stuff is. It stays the same year round, doesn't it? Poor mm. guy. <laughs> and so, so maybe tell the people why you, you chose this random ass place that nobody's ever heard of, even Brazilians. Uh, I suppose that, yeah, that gets us back to the Lance Armstrong thing. Um, let me just check the two testicles are still there. Yeah, yeah, we're good. Um, One, two, three. <laughs> the third one's for speed. <laughs> um, basically, I was just like looking at a map and thinking, there are a lot of Brazilian states I've not been to because there are 26 plus a federal district in case anyone was counting. And uh, I was like, oh, fuck, this place is close to Guyana. My grandfather died in the war trying to colonize that place. So, you know, it'd really? be great to honor him, but no. <laughs> we colonized <laughs> like, Guyana like shit. 200 years ago. <laughs> but everybody asks me what the fuck I'm doing here. So that's my story. It's, oh, to honor my granddad, the, the, the second king of Guyana. <laughs> Jesus Christ. And they're like, but dude, you're a little pale to be Guyana. And I'm like, 
Yeah, yeah, he had a pigment issue. Albino, bro. No, I, yeah, I had to get it off Google Translate, but I've got it down now. For like Josh um, Dobbs. <laughs> uh, so what I realized was there's a road that goes from here to Guyana, yeah, to some bumfuck town, like, again, of like 8,000 people. And I was like, right, I'm going to ride that on a bike. <laughs> it's, a, it's like a hundred, I think it's 140 kilometers door to door. So for the American listeners, I think that's 2.7 million miles. Yeah. You could do it in light years, maybe something like that. It's 97,286 footballs, I think. Nose to nose. <laughs> um, so yeah, I was like, fuck it. I don't want a bike. And um, yeah, I've been doing some training and stuff. And uh, yeah, I mean, the heat doesn't help. And, uh, you know, like there's, there's nothing between point A and point B. And so, like, it's it's not as easy as I expected. <laughs> like, like all your feats. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah. Because you know, generally, I just look at something and go, like, that'll work. That'll be fine. And then it never is. You know, like the other day, I went out and I uh, I broke down. By broke down, I mean I got a, a, a flat tire. Right. It, ment- mentally, there have been many breakdowns, more than I care to count. We'd need to do a three-hour episode. This is not Joe Rogan. It doesn't work. Um, <laughs> you know, I broke I broke down, right? And I was about 40 kilometers out of the city. Jeez. Yeah. Um, oh, sorry. I'd come back a little bit. So it may be 30 out, right? And I knew I knew there was a, a gas station. Help those American <laughs> listeners, right? There was about 15 kilometers away. And I was like, what, the, what can I do? Because a piece of metal had gone through my tire and through the inner tube. Even if I'd have had a spare inner tube, I probably would have had a problem. Oh, because the metal had gone through the tire. Because we're like people down here drive like lunatics, yeah, and nobody uses that road. Whenever there's a car crash, nobody bothers to clean it up. So there's just debris and stuff everywhere, right? And I was like, right, I'm going to walk back, yeah. Obviously, walking's a lot slower than cycling, yeah. So the clouds went away. The clouds that I knew were going to be there, cloud cover that I'd prayed for. I'd been praying, you know, the cloud dance in the morning. And um, yeah, they'd gone, man. And I was still about five or six kilometers away from the petrol station, and I was dying. I'd eaten all my protein bars, I'd drunk all my water, yeah, and I was sweating buckets out there, yeah, enough buckets to make a hat. And um, <laughs> yeah, one guy had come past on a motorbike, right? And you know my track record of taking free rides from people. I think that was actually the last time we spoke was in Egypt when I nearly got stabbed. Yeah, um, and I was like. This, I mean, even if I wanted this ride, how the hell am I going to hold on to your motorbike, yeah, and pull this bike along that's got one tire as we go up and down this bumpy road? I, so I politely thanked him and he carried on. The next guy came past and he was in a van. And I was like, to be honest, I'm so hot. If I don't get in this van, I'm going to die anyway. So I was like, yeah, fuck it, get in the van. And actually, he turned out to be a sound guy. Yeah, he took me back into the city and he dropped me at a bike shop so I could get it sorted out. But I was just thinking, yeah, that was... Like, as I said, maybe 30 kilometers out of town by the time I'd rode back a little bit. Yeah. If that had have happened maybe another 30, 40 kilometers along that road. And again, you've only got like a few farms between there. There's, you know, so you, the only people that are going there are either going to Guyana or going to these farms because maybe they've got work on and stuff like that. Yeah. If I didn't see somebody, well, it's probably, it might be a drug route. Who knows? There's a lot of gangs out here. Right, like one, one, one of the road signs, in fact, two of the road signs I saw on that walk, yeah, had just been like obliterated by bullet holes. So you could hardly even see the signs for where they were going. I mean, you knew because it's just two directions, obviously. Maybe, maybe it's maybe you were close to Grand Falls. Maybe, I didn't know if it was that <laughs> rough out there. Um, but yeah, so I was thinking like, fuck, if I break down, you know, because it could be something worse than a tire. The chain could snap. Yeah. Right. And I'm out there. How the fuck am I going to walk anywhere? Like I'm a, I'm a reasonably good walker. Like if we had 50 guys in a room, I'd be in the top five walkers, hundred <laughs> percent. Yeah. But I mean, I don't know if I can walk 60 kilometers, for example, if I get stuck halfway. So I've, I've got some serious doubts now about this, but you know, we'll, we'll see. I haven't thrown in the towel yet. Yeah. I mean, that's tough, dude. Is there, is it just that like the side is a bunch of like, there's a bunch of random metal as you go, or like, should you be a bit more on the road? Like what's, a lot of it has hard shoulder, you know, and some of that is well tarmacked and it's okay. Some of it then gets a little bit gravelly, you know, but then on the parts where there's no hard shoulder, especially around the bridges and stuff, because there's a few streams, you know, I'm, I'm still technically in the Amazon. Um, right. You know, so when you get to like the bridges, there's no hard shoulder. So any crash that's happened there, 
you know, it's like a graveyard for car parts. Like you could probably build your own rubber factory if you just went back and picked up everybody's rubber from their old vans. <laughs> Oh, so yeah, I mean, I'm I, you know I probably have a few more beers and flip a coin and see whether I'm going or not. But I've, you know, the plan's there. The plan's still there. We we'll just we we'll just have to see about it. Yeah, dude. And I mean, Guyana's like not a place that people go to at all. No, but we 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 call it we call it European South America here. I say we as if I'm one of the Brazilianers now. I feel like I am part of the family now. Are uh, European? Well, yes, because I'm more European than I am Brazilian anyway. We call it European South America, which is like Guyana, Suriname, and French Guyana, and literally nobody fucking goes there. Like there are no, there's no infrastructure that gets you in and out of that place, and the flights are insanely expensive. Literally, the the white people that go there are like miners. Yeah, and I don't mean they're like sixteen years old; they're like the ones digging <laughs> up the ground. <laughs> yeah, a lot of sixteen year olds that go to Suriname. So yeah, I mean, I, you know, I like to tick off some rare places and i feel like i've i mean I've, I've done most of the obvious places now so if you don't take the shiny what are you going to take nothing left yeah you, you're 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 do, you're doing a bit of the the, the hipster route oh, i suppose you could call it that but but so so that's i guess the, the 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 challenge that you're at now but before then you know you left portugal and you went on a little bit of a route you told people a little bit about where you went can you give us a little bit of a of an insight of what happened because uh, from what I've heard from my local connection with the uh, Mexican police, they might have had you on file. So I was in a well, – I, I figured I'd go to Cancun. I mean, I wanted to go to Mexico, right? Cancun wasn't top of my list, but the flights just made it by far the most logical choice, as did the Airbnbs, because I still needed to do some work on the weekdays. You know, these adventures don't pay, don't pay for themselves. Such a North American destination. Yeah, but I realized that as soon as I got off the plane – like everything was advertised like TTI Fridays. Watch football here. Senior frogs. Yeah. <laughs> Senior frogs. Think about how they're trying to attract white people. It's a Spanish word and an English word. Don't think that yeah. there's many Mexicans who go there. I didn't see any. Um, I didn't go, to be honest. I, I, I read about it in my guidebook. It wasn't recommended. Um. So I was in fucking Cancun, right? And you know, I I knocked about a little bit in Mexico. I did a few other a few other bits. Some of it was it was pretty cool. Uh, I didn't go too deep into you know like central or northern Mexico, you know, even to the to the west coast, for example. It was quite limited the the ground that I covered. But you know, I you know I, I went there to just experience a little bit of it with the idea that I might go back in the future, and I I got that from it. But the idea was, you know, well, one of my big ideas was to go down to Belize, as I said, ticking off those shinies, except, right. you know, John McAfee, who else goes to Belize? <laughs> what a good doc, though. That was a good doc on Netflix. That was a wild doc. I, I fully enjoyed that, man. The guy that was, the guy is just off the rails, wasn't he? Or wasn't he? That was like sex, drugs, and antiviruses. <laughs> <laughs> I think they're called condoms now. Uh, <laughs> So I, I knew, you know, one of the appeals of staying along the East Coast was it would be pretty easy to get down to Belize. But I figured because, you know, I had a little bit of a time limit, as most people do when they travel anywhere. I um, I was like, all right, I'll do a, maybe a long weekend down there. And I was doing some research and, man, it's hard to get information for that trip. Yeah, because I figured that the only people who actually go down there generally – are like rich American retirees because Belize is an interesting place. Yeah, it's one of the few places in the world where you don't need you don't need a residence visa. You just oh, need really? to go to an office every ninety days, and then you can live there for as long as you want. There are there are there are zero requirements to live there. John McAfee was all about that. He probably got yeah. that one eighty visa. <laughs> got got the free extension. Got those dollars. Uh, so why eventually found out. Yeah, you know, and my Spanish is like a D minus if we were doing grades. But you know, I could, I, I know that Senor Frogs means Mister Frog, for example. <laughs> so I, I managed to get like the you know some 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 insider information. Yeah, like I was working for the CIA or something. Uh, and it turns out that there's a bus down there. Yeah, because I, what I wanted to do was go to a city called Corzal. Yeah, not to Belize City, because yeah, you might find it on the map if you look hard enough. It's not even there. Might need another 15 degrees on those Ch glasses, Ch though. It's fucking tiny. 
Chitamal is the only one. Ah, oh, it's next oh, to Chitamal. Chitamal's still in Mexico. Uh, yeah, it's in Mexico. Bel Belmopan. No, anyway. No, no, it's it's called Corzao. It's just after Chetamal. Anyway, okay. right. I didn't want to go down to Belize City because I heard there's fuck all to do there. It's just a slightly bigger city, and it's like twice the mileage. And I was like, it's a long weekend, right? Do I want to spend five hours on a bus or eight hours on a bus? Five's going to win that every time, right? You know, there's only yep. so many, you know, so many pages of the book I can read. You know, I don't really read normally. I just drink beers on the bus, but. Right, there's only so many beers you can drink on a bus. So, going down there, and I found out you can get the bus down there. Wonderful. Part one is solved. However, there is no bus back to Mexico. Not one. Zero. Zilch. What'd you do? Well, let me get to that. So, I, I, I looked for other possible transport options and found still nothing. You know, and I thought, oh, maybe some travel blogger. Because, you know, uh, when you get to these harder destinations... You're not really looking at like Lonely Planet or Rome to Rio anymore because they don't have what you need. You're looking no, for like no. travel bloggers that have done this part of the world. Thank God we're in the 21st century, you know, because like 20, 30 years ago, fuck you, were just winging it yourself. I yeah, suppose none of us worked online then, so we probably had different problems. You trust, know, like you trust probably in that had six nap. months. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Maybe that was easier. Probably was more fun. Um, to be honest, Google Maps was shit when I first started traveling way back in whenever it was. And I found that more fun, but I suppose that's a different story for a different day. Um, anyway, no information, but I managed to find some travel bloggers that said, oh, you can catch something called a chicken bus. Yeah. Or what they would call a chicken bus, which is just an old school bus. They got them from America. Yeah. Done no updates to them for like 40 years or whatever. And, you know, for, for like a dollar, a couple of dollars. They'll drive you to whatever the destination is. However, yeah, those aren't scheduled and there aren't, there isn't really much information on where or how to catch them. So I managed to get down there, right? Got across the border. And one of the ideas I'd thought of was the town, Corazal to Chetamau, is 24 kilometers, right? Border is literally in between, it's about 12. To some people, that might sound really far. Any super athletes listening to this, well, fucking, you should be out running, not listening to this. The 12 kilometers maybe doesn't sound so bad, right? Uh, I would really consider him walking. However, there's a big kind of military issue regarding the border between Belize and Mexico. There's a really large no man's land, and there's a lot of information that's unclear about whether you can cross it or not. However, I spoke to both border guards on both sides. Again, that D minus Spanish coming in handy. And they were like, yeah, man, if your legs work, you can walk it. So, so, so like, when right. you were down there, were you using Spanish or w was it like when we were in, in Peru where you just used Portuguese and they'd catch on? Yeah, it was more of the, the Portuguese with the, they, they're right. catching on. You know, I've got a few words in the locker, but not, you know, we couldn't discuss politics or like Greek philosophy, mm. which we also can't Fair do enough. in English because I don't know anything about it. Um, Me no, I'm a big Socrates guy, though. So I, I, I was aware that plan B was going to be to walk. So I was like, right, well, at least I know that I've got an option. Get into Corozal. Corozal is a miserable place. Man. Really? Like, yeah. <laughs> what happened to you? And I, well, started when I got off the bus. I said to the woman, we were, I knew it was a small town. Yeah, again, it's, it's like a couple of thousand people, right? But it's by the beach chilled out they speak english i figured i'd get a couple of beers maybe try some local food yeah maybe you know see if i could meet some some local people enjoy the culture i don't know something like that right wasn't expecting fireworks right so I, but i knew it was small and the policewoman who i spoke to at the bus station i was like where's the hotel yeah there's only a few hotels there everybody knew the name of my hotel it, she was like no no it's very far you've got to catch a taxi right and the accent there is so thick yeah they're creole caribbean english yeah that i i was like what what sounded like one of those old stone cold promos from wwe what what one one oh man it was like they she's like walk one bomber club you're like mango and i was she, like she sounds she, she sounds like somebody from toronto <laughs> <laughs> i was never blessed with accents um 
but yeah, so I didn't, uh, you know, it's, it, for anyone who's watched it, it was like speaking to somebody from Top Boy, but, it, you know, worse. Um, but anyway, she's like, oh, you get a taxi. It's, like, it's one fucking road. What do you mean get a taxi, right? Anyway, probably should have got a taxi because the hotel had decided to paint over their sign so it actually just looked like a house. It took me about two hours to find it, right? In a town that doesn't even take two hours to walk past every building. I'd walked past it about 10 times. Fuck. Anyway, finally... Oh finally managed to check in right and it, the only place i'd ever experienced this before was in cuba yeah uh, and i don't want to you know paint with a broad brush here but i felt like i was getting some unwanted attention for being white were you the only one i, I saw one other guy actually um but that was it Oh, and I saw a couple of Americans going into like a gated community on the beachfront, pulling out of like a, like one of those Porsche SUVs. Yeah, they, they just went right into a sen senior frogs. Yeah, man, I'm so glad the Nasdaq is doing well. We won't have to go back to Washington this week. <laughs> like those kind of people, right? <laughs> uh, <laughs> so there were a couple of white people there, but they were generally keeping themselves to themselves. They were well away from the community, right? And, and, you know, people were shouting stuff and you didn't really understand it because of their, their fucked up accent or, the, you know, the slang they were using. And it just felt really uncomfortable, right? And there's a lot of people riding around on bikes as well, which I thought was odd. I didn't really get why. A lot of people riding around on bikes. Anyway, nothing bad actually happened. It just felt a little bit uncomfortable, right? So went for a little dip in the sea, you know, it's Caribbean, so it's still pretty nice. But there's no actual real beach or anything around there. It's like one of those, um, like, concreted areas. What? And where I was a bit suspect with everybody kind of just hanging around because there's nothing to do there. Life moves at like, you know, not even a mile, not even a mile an hour. It's like a meter an hour because no, nobody has got anything to do. So everybody is just sitting around. And I was like, fuck, man, like coming from Brazil or haven't spent a lot of time in Brazil. Do I trust my stuff being in the sea where it might take me like a little bit of time to climb out because it's not sand? And I was like, it's uncomfortable. So right, go back to the hotel see what else I can do and then, uh, you know, work out what to do with my, uh, with my weekend hotel door is locked. Right. Woman had already said to me as well, we can't charge you the price that you've got on booking because that's a mistake. And I was like, well, there's no other fucking hotels here. So I suppose I'm going to pay what you're asking. And now the door's fucking locked. So I'm just sitting there outside. Like what, what do I do now? This city is really boring. I've got no, where to go in this guy rides past on a bike right it's got a slingshot and i think we did this in season one when we spoke about you're, Vietnam. you're, you're, good, rick, you're good with slingshots yeah 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 me and ricky got accosted by a gang member with a slingshot so now do you know what i mean i've got a bit of ptsd with slingshots whenever i see one i assume it's coming for me can't watch dennis the menace <laughs> so the guy, i mean the guy the guy uh, the guy's grammar was was awful you know it was, it was back to one of those promos he's like I could buy me a drink. And I was like, what? You know, and I, 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 tempt, I was tempted to give him a stone cold stunner, but then I remembered about the, uh, about the slingshot, you know, and the fear that, you know, the fear got hold of me after a couple of minutes of understanding. I realized that he was trying to get like a drink and some food off of me. I was like, I've got nowhere to fucking hide in this city. Clearly everybody's going to know everybody because there's, you know, 50 people here, or whatever. Yeah. Fuck it. I'm going to go buy this guy a drink. Yeah. Because I realized my bank card was working on ATMs. Wonderful. So I actually got him a drink and, you know, like a chocolate bar. And he fucked off. And I was like, you know, I'm glad that was the end of that. Because that could have got that could have gone ugly. I remember you calling me after that happened and being like, dude, this is the most scared or this is I, I, I've been to a lot of different places, but like I'm actually kind of scared to be out here. And I was like, I've never heard you say that. <laughs> That you've been all, almost attacked in Turkey by uh, a guy with a, a machete. You've been in a war zone in Sri Lanka, shoot, shot at. Like, there's a lot of things that have happened to you that you should be scared. Somebody tried to stab you from McDonald's. Yeah, here in, in, in Belize, and you're scared. And I was like, holy shit, I might have to go get him. Yeah, I think it was because, you know, in those events, it was like something happening out of the ordinary, whereas this was just the normal day. And it just felt like maybe I'd picked the wrong town to go to. Was it that there was right? like, like a lot of gangsters or something? 
Well, this is what I mean. I didn't want to paint, you know, with a broad brush or make too many generalizations because they were probably regular people. But with all the like the media coverage we've had in the in the UK of like, you know, the the Caribbean people around London and stuff like that, a lot of them are associated with gangs. So you grow up thinking that, right? You know, it's it's the media's fault. Well, you know, I don't imagine the crime rate in Belize is low, so maybe it's half true. You know, I didn't look. I, you know, I didn't go on like a Ross Kemp documentary and like, dude, are you part of a gang? How many people have you shanked recently? <laughs> You know, what but, you could have asked them though is why their flag is the worst in the world. <laughs> it looks it's lame, it looks, flag, isn't it? It is really bad. Like, what happened? It looks like think, somebody tried to draw it but closed their eyes. I think it was one of those ones where they had like a competition amongst like the, the primary school kids and they just let the special one win so that he felt good about himself. It's really bad. Yeah, it's not every country is a Seychelles, are they? So where was I? Right. So anyway, so just, out. yeah. All right. So eventually, eventually. Um, oh no, not even eventually. What I realized was, fuck this. I'm gonna go for a beer because it's always the solution, isn't it? So I went for a couple of beers, and um, yeah, when I got back, the door was open. Thank fuck. And I, I, I spoke to the guy about the bill, and he was like, "Yeah, you need to pay this." So, all right, where's the, where's the cash machine? So I went down to the cash machine. My card doesn't work. International card, never failed anywhere in the world. Better than the one I had in Cuba when we did that in season one. Not the same card, not the same bank. Yeah, this has never failed. Went to the next one. Failed again. Right? And I was like, fuck. What do I do now? Because I know that it works on the machines, like when you go to pay on a PDQ machine. But if I can't get cash yeah. in this small-ass rural town, where nearly everybody except the supermarkets taking cash only, I'm in serious trouble. So I went back and the guy accepted pesos. He'd already upped the rate from booking. Yeah. And now he'd up the rate again because I needed to pay him pesos. But what fucking option did I have? Gotta fight and survive, boys. So I was like, right, well, you fucked around with the price. So I'm going to fuck around and tell you I'm only staying for one day because my plan of like a three day trip, I'm going to, it felt like being in purgatory being down there or purgatory, however you say that. Should have read a dictionary before I tried that. Um, <laughs> you know, so I was like, right, one day is going to do me. Fuck it. It's a mistake. Let me, let me, let me get out of here. Right. So, you know, I got a bit of food, found a restaurant that took some, took a card. And then I went back to the supermarket, uh, got a couple more beers because yeah, why not? And um, got a bunch of water for the next day. Cause I was like, right, actually now this walk is on. Cause I can't, if I find a chicken bus, I can't pay for the chicken bus. I've well, just fuck, given all my pesos. I've just given oh. all my pesos to this guy. Oh my and they God, don't even fuck. want pesos. They want Belize. They want Belizean. Is it Belizean pounds or Belizean dollars? I don't remember now because I didn't ever, I never got to see one. Right. I just never was interested because I saw the flag and I was just like, never going to go to this country. No, off the list. <laughs> so, so no chicken bus, right? No money, but I've, I've stocked up on water Gatorade as well in case I need those electrolytes. Right. And I'm like, right, I'm going to set off fucking early to get this done. So what do I do? I've got my, you know, my, my water on my, on my desk, right? And I'm like, right, I'm going to sleep, set my alarm. Yeah. Miserable hotel room as well. There wasn't even a window in it, right? And so take off the water, dry it because, oh, that water's come from the fridge. Put my phone down with the alarm, go to sleep. Yeah. Hear my phone ringing in the morning. My alarm probably sounds slightly nicer than that. Um, <laughs> sounds like a rattlesnake. Um, so I, I go to turn off the alarm. It's not working. Screen screen's not working. There's no light on it either. It's just it's just ringing. So what uh, what do I do? I panic. So I, I, I open up the back and I take out a battery, and fuck. There's like a pile of water in there clearly when i dried it off and turned off the light i hadn't noticed there was still some water on the side and now the phone was not working so i also didn't have a map and oh. i was going to walk 12 kilometers for through rural belize maybe 24 if i had to do the other side of the border as well because i had no pesos however where i was aware that this might have been a problem i did keep an eye on the roads that we took coming in 
to the town. So I was like, fuck it, I'm going to go. Door was locked again. So I had to go and knock on every door in this dingy ass little hotel until I could find the owner to wake up and let me out so I could leave. Yeah. And I was like, ah, oh, I'm, I'm going. He's like, but yeah, where's your taxi? And I was like, taxi, man, I haven't got any money. That's why I paid you in pesos yesterday. I said this. He's like, ah, oh, dude, take, take free Belizean dollars. Yeah. They'll, they'll, the taxi driver will drive you for that. I was like free Belizean dollars. All right. I'll take it if it's free, I suppose. The guy right? gave you three Belizean dollars for your f- drive back to Mexico. <laughs> Cause he was like, yeah, yeah you're going to need it. Right. He's like, I, I fleece like, this guy so fucking bad. I've got fucking sales <laughs> for like a quarter. I'm good boys. Like I'm retiring. <laughs> so I walk out with my free Belizean dollars. Yeah. And the first thing I do is go to the bus station, hoping there's a chicken bus. The whole thing is actually just boarded up. I think the bus, the bus station shut down after I left, like for good, closed down, gone out of business. Um, so I, I lost some mileage doing that as well. Get back onto the, the kind of road that I know I'm supposed to be on. And fortunately, every now and again, there are a couple of locals that you'd pass on their bikes. Fuck knows where they're riding to because there's nowhere to go. And um, I, you, you know, you could ask, am I going the right way? Is it this way to Mexico? And they'd be like, yeah, young gun. You're a little bit far, but in it, you don't know. I don't know if that was any better than the last time, but I'm trying. <laughs> no woman, no cry. <laughs> <laughs> um. So, you know, so, so a couple of times I've been able to ask for a little bit of advice, especially getting out of this, this small town because there were a couple of roads leading out. Once you're on the main road, I suppose you kind of know where you're going. Yeah. Um, I say main road. It's still just a, you know, a single lane highway. A taxi driver pulled up to me, right? And he's like, oh, where are you going? You want to go to, to Mexico? And I was like, I will only take you, but for three Belizean dollars. Yeah. And he, yeah, I think, I think he's saying like, I want 35, I want, oh, I want $35. And I was like, Dude, I'm being honest with you. I've got no money. Like, I've got the $3 somebody gave me. We speak the same language, right? Apparently. And he was like, he got legitimately angry at me. He's like, what? You think this is a joke? You think I'm a joke? Yeah. I won't take you for $3. I want to be like, dude, you pulled up and asked me if I wanted a lift. I didn't flag you down and offer you the $3. I told you the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. If anyone's a dick here, it's you. I didn't say anything to him because I didn't want him to stab me, but... You know, so I was like, no, thanks, but that, that, you know, I'll walk. And fortunately, actually, the walk was quite pleasant because I left so early that it wasn't even hot yet. You know, I mean, I was still, you know, reasonably White boy not wet. fresh. Yeah, wet, maybe damp, damp or moist would be better, I suppose. I'd seen a lot of vultures as well. I saw a big house of about 200, a big abandoned house, about 200 vultures on it, which was uh, something you don't see every day. Mm. But yeah, other than that, the walk was pretty uneventful. However, right, I then got across the Belizean side. They charged me an exit fee to get out, which I knew was coming. But I, I you know, I really felt like they should do impair they, me. They to took card though. Of course, they took card. Um, and I managed to walk across the first bit of the border. However, then you get into the part that's a little bit controversial. And a taxi driver tried to sell me a ride, and I was like, "No, forget about it. I'm walking." And then a guy who wasn't a taxi driver tried to sell me a ride. Yeah, and I was like, I haven't got any money. And he was like, well, I'm not a taxi driver. Do you want to just get in? I'll drive you anyway. I said to him, all right, fine. He's like, yeah, I'm just, you know, I'm looking for work to, like, to give people lifts. And I was like, well, I've got $3. You can have that if you want, because what am I going to do with that in Mexico? So to be fair, he did drive me through like the military stretch part of it, the DMZ, I suppose it would be, demilitarized zone. And um, which is funny, because I don't think there's ever been a Belize-Mexico war, not for turf anyway. They leave that to the gangs, don't they? Um, so I got to the Mexico side, right? And there's a massive queue, yeah? And the whole time we'd been in this um, little journey just across this little DMZ zone, the guy had been like, ah, oh, my buddy going to take you to, to shut them out. My buddy's going to take you to shut them out. I was like, dude, I don't need a lift. I don't need a lift. I've got it under control. Him and his buddy, yeah? And I mean, he was a pretty big guy. His buddy must have been about seven foot two, yeah? 300 pounds, right? I'm exaggerating a little bit, obviously. Uh, was standing by the door watching me like hawks yeah or like the vultures from the house the whole time right i got up to the uh to the immigration desk and the guy asked me some questions in english so i didn't have to try with the you know my d minus spanish and he rejected me he was like no not unless you can show me your flight ticket and i was like dude do you want to see how wet my phone is oh no 
And I was like, this might be a blessing in disguise because, you know, I've got this, this guy and his linebacker of a friend waiting to give me a ride. Yeah. Maybe if I just wait it out here for a little while until the guy feels sorry enough for me once, you know, I'm crying a, a pile of tears that he lets me back yeah. in and they've already You are a good crier. One of the best. One of the best. Yeah, you learn how to do it, right? So I, I was like, right, fuck. A bit, a bit of time passed. The guy was come, had already come back and reaffirmed, if you can't show me the ticket, you can't come in. You go back to Belize, right? I did not want to go back to Belize. So I, I, I was playing around with the phone, playing around with the phone, and eventually it turned back on. And I was like, you're right. Wonderful. Okay, we're in. So I showed him my flight ticket to get out of Mexico. Yeah. He let me in, walked past the linebacker and the taxi driver, and they're like, have a nice day, Buffalo soldier. <laughs> and I was like, was that it? And they're like, yeah, yeah. Good one, buddy. And that was it. I was done. I was through, right? Nobody tried to kill me. I got back into Mexico and I was walking. I was on my way. And then the gu- gu- border guard come sprinting at me. Yeah. Fucking gun still strapped to his side. Like, you can't walk here. You can't walk it. And I was like, oh, but I'm in the Mexico side now. I'm on a, I'm on like a public path. It's because they spray all of the vehicles and things like that as they cross the border to cleanse them of belizean or COVID or something like that. I don't know. They probably saw their fly. <laughs> <laughs> they're like Wait, flies, terrible, terrible, right? Mexican flag, straight banger. Dog. Dog. It's a flag. Dog. Dog. Yeah. And so so he sent me back, yeah. But just as my luck, you know, seemed to have turned, or uh, as soon as my luck had turned, there was a fucking chicken bus there. And I spoke to the woman. She was Belizean, but she said, Oh yeah, I'll take pesos. So it cost me like a buck, and she drove me into Shetamal. I didn't need to walk the last 12 kilometers. Going to Shetamal, oh, yeah. right? And I was like, ah, oh, what, um, you know, the only other thing that can go right today is they let me change my bus ticket without charging me. And they did. Man, I grew up in Europe, yeah. We were supposed to be developed and first world. You'll never get away with changing a prepaid bus ticket like this. And she was like, yeah, no worries. Just tell me when you want to go. Imagine changing your, air, 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 uh, your, your airline ticket. Ryanair charges Sorry. you more than the actual f- f- cost yeah, of the flight. <laughs> Robin bricks. Jesus Christ. So I sat around. I found a bar outside the bus station. Yeah. Smashed a couple beers, got on the bus, and I was like, this has been a hell of a roller coaster. Like, so much was wrong at the start of the day. No phone, no money, no map, not allowed back into Mexico. Two guys who look suspicious and are clearly, or seem to be clearly waiting for me have a problem with me or a reason to be waiting for me. None of that had actually gone wrong whatsoever. I'd locked out of all of it, like feeling like I was invincible when I rocked back into Cancun. Yeah. Like I was top fucking boy. Right. So I was like, and I'd been in Cancun for like maybe a week when this happened. Right. Uh, What I want to do now, I'm tired. It's been a long day. I'd walked, I'd got up early and walked a lot. Senior frogs. I was staying out of the hotel zone. Mm, yeah right right because the airbnbs are cheaper and i didn't really want to be surrounded by the you know those guys from minnesota the whole time i needed a, a little bit of peace and quiet um some big sid time um so i was like right uh, let me just google a, a restaurant i'll get a, a you know a burger or something you know just something simple to keep myself happy like, ah, that's that's a good 15 20 minute walk let me go to the they call them oxos they're oshos Right. And they're like, uh, like 7 Elevens, convenience stores. There's one on the end of every street. You know, it's right. good to go there and, you know, get a couple of beers for the house, things like that. Ah, let me get a road beer for the walk, you know, because I had a couple of beers that I had in the fridge anyway. And, uh, you know, I was already a little tipsy. Right. Fantastic. Chuck on a pair of, you know, just exercise shorts. I think I've got one pocket anyway. So I just stick uh, like a, I don't know what it would have been, like 200 pesos, maybe with my card in case, you know, I just can use the card in the supermarket. Keys to the apartment, yeah. Didn't even have my phone with me because I left the phone resting <laughs> after the day that it had recovering from drowning. Yeah. Right? Or a rice bath. <laughs> I, I, I still can't believe that thing dried out, to be honest. <laughs> um, yeah. So, why did I grab the, grab the, grab the quick, a quick tin, 
walked through an alleyway to where this burger place was supposed tin, to be. Tin, you mean a beer? A tin, yeah, a tin is a, a tin is a beer in a metal container. Right, but I mean a tin could also be for people who chew tobacco. A little tin. Ah, a tin is in. Yeah, that's new to me. I yeah, grabbed a right. tin of beer. Yeah, but anyway, beer. Just, just making sure people know. Yeah, I mean, bilingual show, isn't it? So, um, yeah. come through this alleyway, right? And I see lights flashing, right? So, police van, right? To a pickup truck, I suppose it would be the curriculum. Were, were you drinking? Yeah, I was drinking. I had the beer in my hand. Oh, fuck. Sorry, I'm continue. from Europe. We've done this, oh, right? Oh, fuck, sorry. And I live in Brazil. There's no laws in Brazil. Oh. So, guy gets out immediately. Right, slams on the brake. <laughs> Two armed guards. Yeah, again, big guns strapped to the side of him, like the border guy from earlier. And I was like, "Oh my fuck!" Yeah, that invincibility just sapped away. Right. Oh and, my. And God. I was, I was thinking like, "What the fuck happens here?" Another van pulled up along as well. Right. And a couple more got out. So you've now got two pickup trucks. Yeah, they're like five seater pickup trucks, big units. Right. And you've probably got four guards in each. Yeah. One guy speaks English. The other guys only speak Spanish. Yeah. And he's saying to me, you can't do this. I'm like, well, it's a mistake. I didn't know. And he's like, no, it's a felony in Mexico. It's a felony in Mexico. I need to take well, details from you. Welcome to North America, buddy. Dude, I did one North American politics class in the University of New Brunswick <laughs> <laughs> when I fucking tagged along with you for the day. Right. And oh, I don't remember them teaching this. I don't think we really got into Mexican politics, but, or, or their laws, but, but maybe not that class, but I think it was on the, I think it was on the midterm. Oh, I should have been there for the midterm. How about, um, dude? I'll, I'll pass you my, my notes. Yeah, please do. But a bit late now. But anyway, <laughs> so he was like, no, it's a felony. And I said, you, you can't, I can't just let you go for this. Obviously, they, they, they smelt the money, yeah. Tourist. We're getting paid today, boys. Off resort, baby. Chicken. And so he said to me, oh, let me take your details. Right? He said, where's your ID? He said, oh, this is a big problem. Because I didn't have my ID. I was only going to the burger stand. It was 15 minutes, right? He's like, I don't have my ID. He's like, well, do you have a picture? Nothing. I don't even have my phone with me. Yeah, it's 50 minutes. For me, it's not an odd thing to leave the house with just cash. Yeah, for what I need. Right? I'm not, you know, I'm a minimalist. It's how I live my life. So that was a decision I made. Right? And so he's making out like it's a big deal. But he's like, oh, what's your details? Yeah. Smart guy, me, right? I give him a fake name, fake address. Like what, Sid? <laughs> Uh, yeah, I think I was like Sid Stevenson or something like this, right? Because he let me write it. And I was like, right, fuck, this guy's not getting my my address. Yeah, not getting my real name. Yeah, because we used to do that when we were kids, right? John if you McCaffey. rode your bike, if you used to ride your bike on the pavement, the um, the, the local support officer, the uh, community support officer would stop the you. Community virgin? He was definitely a virgin, that's right. He would threaten to f- send a fine to your parents for riding on the pavement. And all you had to do was give him a fake name. So I've been doing this since I was about 12 years old. So I gave the guy a fake name and a fake address. And I was like, Brendan right, Kilvington. <laughs> God, I hope he's listening to this. <laughs> so, right. He was like, you can pay at the station. Yeah. Or you can pay now. And I was like, no, no, I'll pay at the station. Because I was thinking, oh, they'll tell me like a deadline to be there. My fake details, they're not going to find me on any system. I'm just never going to fucking show up. Yeah. I was like, oh, I'll pay at the station. No problem. And he's like, okay. So I went to walk off and the guys grabbed me and threw me in the back of the pickup truck. <laughs> what? And I was like, the fuck? <laughs> there was three other guys in the back of the pickup truck. Yeah. All handcuffed to the railing, like laying down. Yeah. Slaps a cuff on my wrist, slaps me onto the, to the railing as well. So I'm there with the other three like felons. Yeah. Laying in the back of this pickup truck. <laughs> and they're driving. I was like, I thought I could pay at the station. He's like, yeah, yeah. If you can't pay now, you pay. It's like, wait, wait, wait. I said to him, like, I've got like a tenner on me, yeah? Like a tenner US, I suppose it'd be the equivalent, yeah? Because I said, it just took a bit of money for the burger, right? And he's like, no, no, you won't get off for that, yeah? And I was like, okay, so I suppose we have to go then. He's like, you know, so the guy was speaking, he's like, if we go to the station, you're going to get a record, yeah, you're going to have to declare that, you know, and it's going to be difficult, right? And then the cars split up, and now I was only in a car with uh with the Spanish guy, or you know, because the guy in the spoke English. I don't know, maybe they they went off to do something else yet. Now I was only with the the three felons in the back of the pickup truck, one armed guard holding on to the back 
like in case anybody tried to make a move or anything, I guess. Not that we could, we were all cuffed. And then three guys in the front of the truck, right? And he was saying to me, that he spoke virtually no English, but he was saying to me like in, in Spanish, pay, pay. And I was like, yeah, okay. Drove me to an ATM. Thank fuck I left the house with the, with the card, just in case I had an emergency, which turns out I did. Yeah, the guy wanted about, 100 and, about 120 off me, yeah? So I went and paid. I looked at him for fuck. I wonder if I could run off in this situation because the cash machine was a little bit far away from the uh, pickup truck, right? And they knew what they were doing was illegal because when somebody went past, yeah, they threw me back on the floor of the, the pickup truck so they couldn't see that they had people in the back. So they were running around <laughs> looking for bribes off of people. This was proper. This was the stories that you hear about Latin America all, all the time, yeah? It was happening right now in front of me. This was completely corrupt, yeah? Could have, could have done with like public enemy being there, like or NWA, fuck the police, fight the power, you know, this shit. Yeah. Right. And I was like, nah, fuck it. Cause if I run and they catch me, they might shoot. And then that gets a lot worse than just paying $120, doesn't it? So I paid him his money, didn't even offer me a lift home, just left me in the middle of nowhere. So I'd now reached my cash limit on the ATM, couldn't use my card for the next, for like for the rest of the day. Only had enough money in my pocket for a burger. Yeah, and I was like in a part of town that I didn't know very well, a long way from where I was supposed to be. And I was like, that was basically 120 euros for a beer. That works out. Oh. Think about it. However, you know, that's, I mean, there was shit, to be honest. There's not really a nice way to paint that. It was just a shit way to end a day where I thought I'd gotten away with one. But I had been getting away with shit all day, and I've been getting away with breaking laws since I started at 18. So, I suppose it was about time somebody caught me for something. If you advertise it over all those years, I think it makes sense. Like, it's not that bad. As I looked at it, it's not even a tenner a year when you break it down. So, you know, I was due. I was overdue, but it still felt like a kick in the teeth at the time. You're good for another 10, 12 years. Yeah, well, I'm just going to avoid North America now. Fuck you guys. Who, who the fuck has laws? I remember being in Germany and telling people that it's illegal to drink in public. They're like, no, like you're screwing with me. I'm like, no, dude, figure out yourself, man. You'll be handcuffed in Mexico. But apparently you didn't hear that advice. So yeah, it's, I Googled a lot of it afterwards just to see how corrupt it was. And it, it, in the guy's defense, the only place you can legally drink on the street in Mexico is the hotel zone of Cancun has an exception. Everywhere else yeah. you can be picked up for it. And, and I had been drinking on the street all week. So even just for that week, I was probably due. Uh, Sid, before uh, we end the episode here, can you leave us with one last story about what happened in Manaus? Because then from Cancun, you flew to Manaus. Okay, so let me, let me cover that for you because I suppose we skipped over that a little bit. Um, when I was in, I, I went to Manaus, which is like the capital of the Amazons or, you know, the state of Amazon and the biggest city in the Amazon. It's Amazon us. I didn't know if we had to put the accent on it or not. <laughs> so basically, yeah, you, you know, we, we did this when we spoke about Peru. I think you can go on these kind of Amazon excursions, you know? And I mean, the guy had said to me, like, cause I said to him like, oh, fuck, all I want to do is go fishing. Cause it was the best thing we did when we did the Amazon. And I was like, right. That's the main thing I want to do is go fishing. Right. So we uh, went out into the jungle. Yeah. Me and uh, he was like, the only way you can do this is if you speak Portuguese, because we just don't have enough guides to give people specific excursions. Yeah. And I was like, oh, thank fuck for you, I do. Oh, thank fuck for me, I do. <laughs> because I'd gone in there. I'd, I'd met a Japanese guy on the street. Yes, fuck all tourists down there. But funnily enough, I met a tourist this day. And because I, he was from Japan, we were speaking English. I thought, you know, we were both just a couple of regular tourists. And I was like, dude, I'm, I'm, I'm one of you, you know, part of the family these days, the Brazilianers. But I'm also one of them. But I'm also one of them, you know. I'm one of everybody now. Except the Belizeans. Fuck those guys in their stupid flag. I got a bucket hat. Right. So he's like, right, you can, oh, okay, okay, I can sort that out because I'll just send you out of a local. So this guy, yeah, it's just a guy with a fucking boat. Yeah. And we're out fishing. We have a cracking, cracking few hours, yeah. Go to some really nice spots, see a bunch of big crocodiles, yeah. Catch about 15 piranhas. It's really lively out there. The guy teaches me how to handle them. And I'm like, man, I'm such a guy of the wild now. Like, I'm basically Bear Grylls with a bucket hat. You're, fu you're, you're fucking Steve Irwin. Yeah. 
like I was I, I was like super nature boy at that point. Woo! For anybody who's still doing the WWE references. Um, <laughs> so a couple of days later, when I get back to civilization, right? They, 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 it's quite common here to go to river beaches, right? And I went to one that was a little bit out of the city and uh, swimming. And, you know, there was a few people there, but I was a little bit away from them. You're kind of not even just swimming, you know, when you're just kind of floating, taking in the, the ambience, cooling down from the 40 degree heat and the humidity a little bit, right? Yeah. And I was pretty calm in there for a little bit. I, I feel something sharp on my foot. Yeah. And I'm like, fuck. And I know that it's pain because I swear in English. Yeah. And I, I'd been speaking in Portuguese and it's odd for me to switch. Oh. So I knew it was serious. And I was like, no, no, no. Get out, get out. And the people around me are like, what the hell is going on? Yeah. As I'm getting out, I can see the blood floating away from my foot. Right. And then as I get out, it, like, it's just seeping blood. Like it's like, it's pouring out. Yeah. People thought like at first, oh, maybe he's just kicked a, a rock or something or like a bit of wood because you get a lot of wood in the river there, right? But not when you saw my toe, right? Middle toe on my left foot was oh. missing the front part, right? Between the nail and as it gets down to the floor, right? What had happened was a piranha had taken part of it. So those guys, they obviously spoke <laughs> oh like, oh, there's this, there's this tourist in the river fucking picking up our brothers, yeah? If we see him again, we'll do him, yeah? <laughs> Like a gang. And one of them fucking got me, man. Took the front bit of my toe off, right? Oh, my God. Uh, yeah. And, I, you know, I was in quite a bit of pain, but more in shock and just adrenaline. I couldn't believe the puddle of blood leaving the river, man. If I'd have stayed in there, because they love blood, right? It's really, really rare that they'll attack a human when there's no blood or reason for them to. But I think because we're having a super dry season at the moment, like it's the driest the rivers have ever been here. Was it your time of the month? <laughs> so maybe they're struggling to get food a little bit, you know, or they, you know, they saw the white meat and was like, that's the, that's the, that's the, that's the sweet kind. Maybe. I don't know. Yeah. Raise, <laughs> you know, I, I just happened to be unlucky, but it's actually been in the news since that a lot of people in that, in that, you know, in that bathing area have also been attacked by piranhas since. Yeah. But uh, that on that day, nobody really knew about it. And so I tried to stick around for a couple of maybe, beers and I was maybe strapping. they watched that Jeffrey Dahmer doc and they're just like all about that white meat. <laughs> Dude, I hope Netflix are paying you for this. We've done about six documentary mentions so far, right? <laughs> yeah, they're they're so, nice. So I tried I tried to stick around for a couple of beers and I was just bleeding through paper towels. And so I got a yeah, I I I I got a, an acquaintance of mine to take me up to the pharmacy. And, uh, you know, got all of the stuff that I needed. And I was, you know, I said to him, oh, I think it was a crocodile that got me. And then the next one came, I was like, yeah, I think it was a shark, you know, just, just to freak <laughs> him out a little bit. And uh, they were like, no, no, you need this and this and this. And I ended up buying like four or five things and, you know, got it looked after. And it's, you know, it's healing up now. Like it, it, it actually bled a little bit the other day after I'd walked back from, you know, done that long walk after breaking down on the bike. Yeah. But other than that, other than the, it, other than it reopening up, it is healing but there's a piece of my toe missing that piranha took a piece of me and that's probably never coming back. Dude, you're an amputee. Yeah. But I'm going to be in the special Olympics. <laughs> Maybe that way I'll win a bike race. Uh, speaking of special Olympics, uh, have you listened to the new, uh, Shane Gillis, uh, special on Netflix Two beers will take off 10% off. It's a really long promo code, so people don't remember it. And yeah, I, I I have watched it, and it's fucking worth every second. It's so funny, dude. Like he is might that, be the that, only guy funnier than us two right now. I can still remember us back in Malta. We get back home from the bar, not being successful, and uh, we we crowd around that computer and listen to some Dave Chappelle. But I feel like if that was us now, we would crowd around the computer and listen to some Shane Gillis. Cause he, at this moment, I think is close to on the pinnacle of stand up comedy. Ah, oh, he's just, he's just crushing it at the moment. I don't see him do bits that just aren't funny. Like everything he does is just excellent at the moment. And he, yeah. he like, he knows like the, the areas that he is just a specialist in like those Donald Trump impressions 
when he yeah. does all the stuff about the Special Olympics and you know the people with Down syndrome, he just knows that he's got that to a T. Yeah, no, he's special. He he does something about the Special Olympics. Uh, he, he does stuff about coaching in the Special Olympics. He does stuff. Yeah. Anyways, so go check his stuff out. And if you want a bonus uh, Shane Gillis uh, special, I guess he has one on YouTube that's free too. So you guys should go check that out because fuck, it's good. Uh, but yeah, so Sid, listen, let's let's call this one a day. I think this one's a great first episode for season three. You know, you, you just took the bucket and that off, but I think we're rock and rolling, baby. Yeah, I was, I was, I was getting a little warm in here. So, as I said, wind, that, that, that 35 degree winter weather gets to you. Yeah, I, I can really relate. It was minus three today. I can't wait till you come back to Brazil. I'm going to love it. Anyways, buddy, take care. This was great. And uh, we'll see you next time. Thank you for listening to Two Beers Till Takeoff. Do you want free additional content or just to stay connected with the show? Then give us a follow on our social media platform. That means TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, all of them. Are you in need of podcast production services, video editing, or anything in between? Then look no further than Strut Sound Productions, the official producer of the Two Beers Till Takeoff podcast. Music produced by Alex Gagne. Check out his work in our show notes. Voiceover done by Viking Leo K. See you next week on Two Beers Till Takeoff. Thank you.